Hey everyone, today I want to show you guys how to create a web server using Nginx. Uh, to get started, let's go ahead and install Nginx. All right, so let's do a sudo apt update just to make sure that we get the latest version. And let's do a sudo apt install Nginx. All right, after it's installed, let's go ahead and verify that it's actually running. And we can see here that it's active and running. If yours says inactive, just do a system CTL, um, CTL status, uh, start Nginx. If yours isn't running, just do a system CTL start Nginx, and that'll start the application. Um, also, right now, uh, the way it's configured, if I reload the machine, um, Nginx will not start on boot. So to make sure that Nginx actually powers on on boot, just do a system CTL enable Nginx, and you're going to want root privilege for that. All right, so now Nginx will start on boot. After we've installed Nginx and ensured that it's running, we want to make sure that if we have a firewall set up, that we configure the firewall to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And so we need to allow port 80 and port 443 respectively. And we can do that manually, but uh, Nginx will come with uh, three profiles that we can uh, um, enable in UFW. So if we do a sudo UFW app list, um, you can see that we have Nginx full, Nginx HTTP, and Nginx HTTPS. And the only difference between the three is Nginx full is going to allow port 80 and port 443. Uh, Nginx HTTP will only allow port 80 and Nginx HTTPS will only allow port 443. And if you want to confirm that, you can always do a sudo UFW app info and then the name of the app. So if we did Nginx uh, full, you can see that these are the rules that it's going to add. So it's going to allow 80 and 443 for TCP, which is what web traffic runs on. Now, I don't have a firewall configured, so um, I'm not going to bother enabling that. Once you've allowed the necessary traffic in your firewall, uh, Nginx is set up to advertise or display a default website. So if we go to HTTP colon slash slash, and then you put either the IP address of your website uh, or your server, or you do localhost, you should see the Nginx default page. And this is it. So it's just letting us know that Nginx has installed and been um, set up properly. Now I want to show you guys um, where the default configurations are uh, set up for Nginx. So if we go to cd slash etsy slash Nginx, this is going to be the primary directory where almost all the configuration files that we're going to manipulate to make configuration to Nginx. And I want to just highlight some of the uh, more important files and directories here. So the nginx.conf file is the main nginx configuration file. Then we have this directory sites available. So this is where we technically configure all the different websites that this server is going to serve traffic for. So we can actually host multiple websites on a single machine. And we can do that because nginx uses a concept of server blocks. And I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, but basically each server block re represents a different website and each server block is going to be represented with a configuration file in the sites.available directory. And if we just cd into there, um, we're going to see that we have a, a default file and this default file uh, is basically the configuration file for the default web page that's being advertised here. Um, so if we want to add a new website, we're going to have to configure a new file and place it in this directory. Then we have the sites enabled directory and the sites enabled directory just has a sim link back towards the configuration files in sites available. So if we go to sites enabled and just do an ls minus la, you can see that there's also a default file here just like there was in sites available. And this file is just a sim link towards etsy slash nginx slash sites available slash default. So it's just a sim link back to this original file. So there's going to be one for every single website that we activate um, under the sites enabled directory.
And lastly, the snippets directory is going to contain configuration fragments that can be included elsewhere in your Nginx configuration. All right, so that's basically all the config files or the, the main ones and the main directories that I wanted to cover. And those are gonna be the ones that we'll be manipulating in today's video. Um, but now let's go ahead and get started with configuring a website. And as I stated before, Nginx uh, can allow us to host multiple websites or domains on the same server. And it accomplishes this by using a concept of server block. So each website you want to host on your machine will need to be configured as a separate server block. Now, before we configure a website or a new website, I want to take a look at what the default website's configuration file looks like. And hopefully that way, that'll give us a good understanding on how to create new websites. So let's go to the sites available. And this is going to be where the default website is configured. And let's just cat that page real quick. Um, so right now we can see here that it's listening on port 80 and it's been configuring it's been configured to be our default server so that means if uh, a user goes to our um, ip address um, and doesn't request a web page a specific web page or it um, requests a web page that doesn't match any of the other server blocks we're going to advertise this website by default um, when we configure our own website we'll just delete the default server option and just leave it as listen 80 and do the same thing on this line below. Next, we have our root directory. So this is going to be the directory that's gonna be offered up to users that are trying to access the website. And if we go to this location here, so if we go to cd slash var slash www slash html, when a user actually goes to this specific website, we're going to um, offer up this directory to them so they can access any of the files in this directory and by default, it's going to load this file. Um, and this file is just an HTML file, and it's gonna be this HTML file right here that basically says, welcome to Nginx, and then this extra information. So we can cat it real quick. And you can see here, it's just a standard HTML file, and you can see here, welcome to Nginx. So that's all that's really happening is that the document root is set to this directory, and by default, Nginx is told to um, send over any HTML file that's named uh, either index.html or index or index.nginx-deviant.html. Uh, and going back to the configuration, let's just take a look at um, some of the other lines. So server name, uh, this one doesn't actually have a server name because it's just the default page, um, but we're gonna have to configure this to be our domain name when we create our own website. Then what this line is saying right here is that when the web server, when Nginx tries to load the index.html file uh, and it fails and then it tries to load the directory and if that fails, it's going to send a uh, return code of 404. And you've probably seen that before when a website doesn't work, you'll see 404 printed on the screen. That's what's happening. And outside of that, that's, all, that's really all the configurations that we need. So let's go ahead and create our first website. So let's go back to the Etsy slash Nginx folder. And if you recall, we want to configure um, new websites in the sites available. So this is where we configure our server blocks. And what I'm going to do just to make things a little simpler is I'm just going to copy the default page configuration. And, um, and that way we don't have to configure everything from scratch. We can just tweak the settings that we need. And I'll just call this, um, since I'm going to call this website, uh, let's say Pottery Farm, we'll call this file Pottery Farm as well. And you don't have to name it the same thing as your website, but it just makes sense um, to do that so that you can easily correlate which, uh, which config file goes to which website. All right, so now we have a file for Pottery Farm. Let's open that up. And as I stated before, we're going to have to delete this default underscore server. We don't need that. And we're going to delete on this line as well, because this isn't going to be the default website that this server is going to advertise. And I'm going to just delete all the unnecessary comments just to make things look a little simpler. All 
All right, so the next thing is we want to specify where the root uh, directory is going to be. So let's go ahead and actually configure that before we do anything else. So let me save the changes we made. And I'm going to go to cd slash var slash www. And I'm going to make a directory for this new website. And I'm going to call it Pottery Farm as well. And once again, we can call it anything we want. Um, but it just makes sense to call it uh, whatever our website's called. So I made a folder called Pottery Farm. And then we're going to move inside that folder. And I'm going to create a folder called um, HTML. Uh, then I'm going to move inside the HTML folder and I'm going to make our index.html file. And this is going to be the HTML file that the user will actually see. So I'm going to create that with the sudo vi. And then I'm just going to uh, just create some basic h1 tag. And then we'll just say this is Pottery Farms website. Now let's go back to the configuration file. Go back to the sites available directory and let's open the pottery farm config file and let's point the root directory to that folder that we just created so this is going to be pottery farm slash html now for server name what we're going to do is uh, we're going to call this whatever our website's called so since it's called pottery farm we're just going to put um, potteryfarm.com as well as www.potteryfarm.com. So that way we'll respond to uh, requests for both potteryfarm.com as well as www.potteryfarm.com. Uh, we'll leave the location setting the same. Um, that's perfectly fine. And notice this line right here. Uh, so this is just means that we're going to load any file that's named either index or index.html or index.htm or index.nginx-dbm.html. And we created a file called index.html, so it will load that properly. All right, so that's all the configurations we needed to make. Let's go ahead and save that. To actually enable the website, we now have to create a sim link towards the site's enabled directory. To do that, all we have to do is sudo ln s. Then we have to point it to the location of the file that we just created in the site's available directory, Pottery Farm. And then point it towards, let me make this a little wider, to Etsy Nginx sites enabled run that. So then if we go up a level, go up to the main Nginx directory, and then cd into the sites enabled, you'll see that that will have created this sim link. And if we do an ls minus la, this points back to the sites available pottery farm file that we created. And that's our main configuration file for our website. Now, we're pretty much good to go with regards to configuration for this website. The one other thing that we have to change is that when we have multiple websites configured on one Nginx server, you will need to make one change on the nginx.com file. So let's open that up real quick. And let's go down to this setting right here. Server underscore names underscore hash underscore bucket underscore size and just delete the comment. So now this configuration is taking effect. Save that. Now let's, before we do anything else, let's test our Nginx configuration just to see if everything is okay and there's no, you know, syntactual error or anything like that. And you can do that with a sudo, whoops, sudo engine x dash t. And this is just letting us know that the config files all look okay. And now 
to actually make the changes take effect, we have to restart Nginx. So just do a sudo systemctl restart Nginx. Now I have a, another server right here, which I'm gonna go to, and I'm going to browse to the to that website that we just created. So if we go to potteryfarm.com, whoops, it looks like we messed something up. So let's go back for a second. And let's see our configuration again. And we want to go back to the sites available because that's probably where we mess it up. And let's open up this file. Yep, I already found, I already see the mistake. So I pointed this to Potter Farm, but it should be Pottery Farm because there's no actual directory called Potter Farm. So it tries to look for that uh, index.html file or this directory, and it doesn't exist. So that's why it's throwing that 404 error. So let's save that. Let's restart Nginx just in case. Now, if we go to potteryfarm.com, you can see it says this is Pottery Farm's website. So it works, we're properly receiving the website. And if we go to www.potteryfarm, it should also work. Perfect, so we got our first website running. Let's go ahead and configure one more just to make sure you really um, get how to configure websites. It's, it's simple, um, it's pretty much just copy and paste what we did before and just fill in the blanks uh, when it comes to the new website's name. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create the uh, the document root or the root directory that the website's going to present. So let's go to cd slash var slash ww and we're going to make a new directory for our new website and let's call this new website gotbeef.com. So we'll make the new directory uh, called gotbeef but once again you can call this whatever you want um, but it just makes more sense to call it the same thing as your website. Uh, a lot of times you'll see gotbeef.com they'll add that into the directory name, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, then CD into that, and then we'll make a new directory in there called HTML. And then we'll CD into the HTML directory, and then we'll make our index.html file. All right, so now let's go back to the Nginx configuration directory and let's go into the sites available folder and let's just create a new config file for our new website. So I'm just going to copy the pottery farm config and we'll call this new config, um, we'll just call it got beef. Uh, but once again, you can also name this whatever you want as well. And then I'm gonna open that up things we have to change is the root directory. So we're going to point to the new directory that we made. The server name has to change as well. And remember the server name is just the website's name itself. So your specific domain name. And let's see if we have to make any other changes. Nope, everything else looks good. Let's save that. Now we have to enable this website and we do that by creating the sim link. So do sudo ln-s, then the path to the file that we just created. And then we want to point it to Etsy slash Nginx sites enabled. And that should be it. So now if we go up a level and then CD into sites enabled and then do an LS minus LA, we'll see that we've got the got beef and it's pointing back to the config file that we just created. 
let's verify if our configurations look okay and everything looks good so now let's restart nginx all right so let's go to our other server now and verify that we can reach gotbeef.com and there you go it's now loading up that index.html file that we created under the gotbeef directory so now we have two working sites now up to this point you can see that we only use http so if we if we do http colon slash slash www.potterifarm.com it works but if we try to do https um, for secure traffic you're going to see that it fails Right, so it fails, and the reason is because we haven't actually configured uh, it to work with SSL. So we need to go ahead and actually configure it to work with SSL so that we can actually accept HTTPS traffic, because most web servers are going to be accepting HTTPS traffic. Actually, most web servers only accept HTTPS, and they, um, they, they either redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS or just block HTTP traffic. And if you aren't familiar with SSL, um, the way TLS and SSL work is by using a combination of public certificates and private keys. The SSL key is kept to is kept secret on the server and it's used to encrypt the content that gets sent to the clients. And the SSL cert is publicly shared with anyone requesting the content and the cert can then be used to decrypt the content signed by the associated SSL key. So what that really means is when a user um, goes to a website and the website wants to basically send that index.html file to the user so that he can actually see the website, um, what he's going to do is he's going to encrypt it with his key, his private key, and he's going to send it to the user. The user will have the certificate of the server and he'll use the certificate to decrypt the traffic that gets sent to him so that he can actually view the actual website. So we can go ahead and create a self-signed certificate using the OpenSSL application. And for the most part, this is perfectly fine for what we're doing. Um, if you're just trying to practice things, um, if you're just labbing things up, or if you're creating a web server for internal access so only internal employees can see it, then having a self-signed certificate is more than fine. But if you want to create a website that's going to be publicly accessible using HTTPS, then you'll want to uh, install a commercially signed SSL certificate so that people who visit your website over the internet don't get warnings in their browser about an unsafe connection. And I'm sure you've seen that error before and I'll show it to you guys when we uh, set this up as well. Uh, it's just a little annoying to have and if you have an actual website on the internet it looks a little unprofessional for uh, for basically users to have to hit um, you know the proceed button so that they can actually see the website. And a lot of times when people see that error on web browsers, a lot of times they just kind of turn away from it because they get a little spooked by the message. But anyways, let's go back to our web server and I'm going to show you guys how to create that self-signed certificate. So you're going to want to make sure that you have OpenSSL installed. If you don't have it installed, just do a sudo apt install OpenSSL. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is, I'm gonna copy this command, it's a fairly long command, and paste it in here. And I'm just gonna go over what some of the more important options are. So right here, um, what this is saying is that we want to uh, make a self-signed certificate instead of generating a certificate signing request as would normally happen. Then we have the dash nodes um, and this is basically tells OpenSSL to skip the option to secure our certificate with a passphrase. Um, the days flag is basically saying we want this uh, certificate to be valid for 365 days. We're then going to create our private key um, and we're going to create uh, RSA keys with uh, 2048 bits. Then the dash key out is basically telling us where we want to store the key. So I am explicitly telling it to store it in the slash Etsy slash SSL slash private and let me go ahead and change the name of this key I'm gonna call this 
something that we'll know is related to um, pottery farm. So I'll just call this pottery farm key. And let me make this a little wider just so you guys can see it a little better. All right. So I'm storing it in slash Etsy slash SSL slash private, and I'm calling it pottery farm key. And then the dash out is telling us where we want to store the cert that we're creating. So I want to store this in slash Etsy slash SSL slash certs. And I'm going to call this, um, we'll call this potteryfarm.crt as well. And, you know, just to, just to clarify, you can store the key and the certificate anywhere you want. Um, these are just some common places you can store the, the key and the certificate. And you can also name the key and your certificate whatever you want as well. I'm just naming it after the website just to make it a little more obvious. So go ahead and run that. It's going to prompt you with a few questions that's gonna ask you for your country code. And you can skip most of these options or put in random info. Uh, the only thing, there's only one section that you really want to make sure you put in the correct info. So I'm just gonna put in US here, state North Carolina, skip that. Organization name, we'll call this Pottery Farm. Uh, skip that. Common name, so this is um, the important prompt. So you either want to put the IP address of your server or your use your domain name. So we'll just call this potterifarm.com because that's gonna be the domain name for the website. Skip the email address. So now it's created our uh, certificate and keys and it's stored it in uh, these two directories that I highlighted uh, um, before. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna configure the website to handle uh, SSL traffic. So let's go to the sites available folder that we've been working on and let's open up the pottery farm config file. And I'm just gonna delete these comments. We don't really need these. Now we want to create a new server block and we just do that um, uh, by typing in server and then squiggly braces. Then what we wanted to do is we wanted to listen on port 443 for SSL traffic. And then just put in this line as well. So this pretty much looks like the previous section if we go up there. Um, but instead of port 80, we're listening on port 443 because that's the standard HTTPS port. But obviously, if you want your web server to listen for, uh, you know, HTTPS traffic on a different port, then feel free to configure whatever port that you want. Uh, then what we want to do is we have to point it to where our private key is stored. So we do SSL underscore certificate underscore key and then we provide the full path to the key. So we stored it in slash Etsy, slash SSL, slash private, slash pottery farm dot key. And there's too many S's there. Then we want to point it to where our certificate is stored. So provide the full path to that. So that's going to be in slash Etsy, slash SSL slash certs slash pottery farm. So, you know, I just want to highlight again, you know, obviously where you store the key and certs don't actually matter and what you call the key in your certs doesn't matter as long as you properly point to where they're stored. That's all that really matters. Uh, now we also want to configure the server name just like we did for HTTP traffic. And so it's going to be potteryfarm.com as well as www.potteryfarm dot com. Then we want to point it to our root directory for this website. So that's going to be slash var slash www slash pottery farm dot com. Actually, I think it's just pottery farm. That was the name of the directory pottery farm and then HTML. And then the last line, um, we're just going to copy this line right here. So most of the configurations are pretty much exactly the same except for the ports um, I changed as well as um, 
as well as uh, adding the certificate location. So those are the only two differences, but everything else you can just copy and paste. All right, and you wanna make sure you keep the original server block. So the original server block is gonna ensure that it can handle HTTP traffic, and this server block is going to ensure that it can handle HTTPS traffic. All right, I'm gonna save the configurations now. All right, let's go ahead and restart the Nginx process so that the configuration changes take effect. Now let's go back to the other web server, or the other server, and let's go to HTTPS this time, and then www.potterifarm.com. Yep, I didn't want it to. <laughs> There we go. Um, so now you can see here it loads the Pottery Farm website. And if we take a look at the certificate, we can do that by going to more information and then view certificate. And you can see all the information that gets displayed. Um, and this is from when we generated the certificate using OpenSSL. It includes any of the information that we filled in. So if we included like a, a country code, state code, city, organization, organizational unit, it's gonna contain all that information in here. All right, so now we've gotten uh, HTTPS and SSL up and running. The one problem that I do see is that if we go to HTTP colon slash slash potterifarm.com, um, it still works and it still just uses uh, unsecured HTTP. Um, and a lot of sites, what they actually do is they'll prevent you from actually sending HTTP traffic to their servers. And what they'll do is if you try to go to HTTP colon slash slash Pottery Farm, uh, what they'll do is they'll then redirect that to HTTPS colon slash slash Pottery Farm. So it always forces all traffic to use uh, SSL. So we can actually configure that in Nginx and it's pretty straightforward. So let's go back to our web server and let's open up our Pottery Farm configuration and go to the original server section for HTTP. So you'll know that because it has a port 80. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one simple line and it's gonna look like this. And we're gonna put this line pretty much anywhere we want. Just make sure it's inside this block right here. So I'm gonna paste it right here. And basically what this is saying is that when traffic comes in destined to HTTP colon uh, slash slash Pottery Farm, it's gonna redirect it to HTTPS colon uh, slash slash, then it's gonna use, um, it's using the server name as a variable. And if you recall, our server name is Pottery Farm or www.potterifarm.com. So that's uh, where it's gonna redirect it to. And once we restart Nginx, so let's go back to our other server and this time let's type in HTTP colon slash slash pottery farm. And notice how it, we're just using HTTP when we hit enter, it's going to automatically change it to HTTPS and we have the lock here. Um, and if you wanna just double check the certificate again, you can go ahead and do that. So that one line now forces all traffic to get redirected to HTTPS instead of HTTP. Um, and that makes the connection a little more secure. Now I do wanna show you uh, a couple things on this server uh, to show you how to kind of troubleshoot certificate issues as well as gather information about a server certificate as well as what TLS and SSL versions it supports as well as what ciphers. And we can use that with the Nmap application. And if you don't have Nmap already installed, just do a sudo apt install Nmap. Um, but I've already got this installed and there's just two commands I wanna show you how to use. Uh, so if you type in Nmap dash dash script and then SSL dash cert dash P443 and then the name of the website you wanna go to. So if we do, um, um, Pottery Farm dot com, um, it's gonna give us our certificate information. So you can see here, organization Pottery Farm, 
the province name, country name. So all that information we filled in, uh, public key type RSA, we're using 2048 bits. And then we've got, um, you know, the rest of the information. So that's just, that's a quick command that allows you to get the certificate information of a website. The next command I want to show you guys is how to actually see what um, SSL version and TSL version a web server supports. And you can use that, you can do that by running the command nmap dash dash script ssl dash enum dash ciphers dash p443 and then the name of the website so potterifarm.com and these are the the different ssl and tls versions that support so by default when you run nginx on the version that i'm running it looks like it disables um, all the ssl versions and it only supports tls which is the newer protocol and it supports tls 1.0 1.1 and 1.2 and you can see the individual ciphers that each one of these TLS versions supports as well. So that's a great tool for troubleshooting. And um, you know, if you make any changes to kind of harden your box down, like uh, you remove support for TLS version 1.0 as well as 1.1, then you'll see both of these sections get removed and you should just have TLS version 1.2. But anyways, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys for this video. I do want to point out that this is the absolute most bare bone configuration for Nginx. There's obviously a ton of more configuration you can do. And right now in this current state, this server is not technically production ready. So you wouldn't want to just configure what I've configured and then just deploy it. Cause um, obviously you want to harden it and add some more changes that uh, really make it a lot more secure than it actually is. But I just don't have the time to go over all the different changes necessary for that. But anyways, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video.